All right, lads. I want to talk about spies. Now, spies can be useful, and they've been buffed several times to make them more useful. However, I think for the most part, spies need to go through some radical changes to make them more inclusive and more part of the game as a whole. Uh, but unfortunately, I think spies in Hoi 4 definitely need some massive improvements to make them more worthwhile overall. I'll admit, though, it probably will cause a lot of balancing problems. It'd be hard to get exactly right. But right now, spies are in a stage where they're really not that effective other than defending and everything else they're not really not that applicable to so example france spies into germany reduces planning bonus down to zero percent i kid you not it wipes out all the planning bonus massively op poland spies into germany massively op also not only does it affect planning but it also gives you a maximum amount of 15 percent intel bonus which is attack and defense which is very useful if you can get the full 15 percent, which is really useful if you've got the spies in there those are the really good parts of spies that's the sweet spot that's the golden part however operations it's just not that great uh, intel overall i suppose it's useful for certain key pieces of information but overall it's not really that effective it's kind of one of those let's say if i'm strategically bombing germany as the uk i want to look how many factories i'm damaging i suppose having the intel on that is kind of useful i suppose but other than that I, you can go without knowing, knowing that information uh, it does also reduce enemy entrenchment as well but by a minus two i think which is just a very small amount compared to how high they can get for entrenchment so that's why i say that spies are more of a defensive tool than an offensive tool anyway let's take a deep dive into spies a spy agency the sis so spies by getting the agency which costs you uh i think five civvies over 30 days it allows you to unlock your first spy which each spy slot takes 28 days to unlock they have a lot really quickly for me because I've used the cheat for it in the console command. And then you can select a spy that have certain traits. I'll admit, I kind of glaze over the traits really quickly because there are only really two that are really, really strong. Uh, one of them is Seducer, uh, which reduces the cast of get, uh, chance of getting captured. Um, and then also Linguist, which kind of works a little bit like Seducer, where it can make them basically change nationality. And if you have the same nationality of the spy that you're building a network in inside of a country, you build the network quicker. Can you see that? Intel strength factor plus 30%. And that basically means you can increase the speed that you gain the network. Also, it also does two things as well. It also increases the operations effectiveness by 10%. And also reduce the operations cost. Well, what do you know? I never even knew that. Now I know that. I'll make sure operations that I never use will use the operative of that nationality. <laughs> okay. I have to look at these stats and really read them because I'll be totally real with you. I never read them because a lot of the time they just don't apply for the stuff that I'm doing. They all tend to relate to operations. I suppose tough sides are kind of good, I guess. If it wasn't a tier list, it'd be somewhere like A tier because at least when they get captured, that means they're not going to give out lots of information, which basically gives intelligence to the other side, which potentially can give them that 50% extra attack and defense intel advantage or bonus. If you reveal too much information i don't even know what infiltration is does anyone know what infiltration is does anyone know does anyone know what infiltration means i have no idea anyway let's hire a bunch of spies in this situation because i'm the uk i'll be wanting to put spies into germany but be aware that i'm going to be cheating a little bit so some of the numbers on the screen may be a little bit different than one you're going to get but as you can see in the example i'm placing spies over the whole of the nation so there's two strategies with spies and i want to say that the youtuber pigeon I watched his video on this and it did give me a little bit more of an insight that I wasn't aware of. I wasn't aware that you could build a bigger Intel network if you stack all your spies on the capital. But there is an advantage to spread them out, which I'll talk about just now. Pigeon's very awesome. Check out his channel out and subscribe. Okay, so now I've got spies in the locations that we'd like. You can see that they're building an Intel network and you can see that it is covering the entirety of Germany. Oh, actually, that's true. It's not covering East Prussia. Now, why is this the case that you can only place spies in certain specific key regions? I have no idea. I've heard people's opinions that it's based on victory points. However, this is a massive victory point. With 10 victory points, you can't place a spy there. Once again, there's a victory point here in Konigsberg worth 10 victory points. You can't place a spy here. Why certain regions of the game will let you place spies but someone can't is beyond me. I have not the foggiest idea, but it's hard-coded. Here's a weird example for all the people who keep saying, it's victory points, it's victory points. Look at this one. I can place a spy in the Arctic Siberia. Okay. I don't even think this has any victory points. It doesn't. What's going on here? I don't know. 
because there's a weird thing going on with uh, the Soviet Union where there's massive gaps in the nation where you can play spies. <laughs> anyway, the advantage of spreading out spies, as you can see here, it covers a larger overall region. And if you hover over the areas that they're building a network with, you can actually see the bonuses that it's giving you. So as the UK, you gain a naval invasion defense, you're getting a planning speed bonus, and the enemy is suffering from a max planning factor reduction, as well as max of entrenchment. And as you build the network bigger and bigger and bigger, you can see that these stats go higher and higher and higher, and they are overall more beneficial. As I mentioned earlier, they tend to apply more for defensive than offensive uh, you could argue that reducing entrenchment is important but it doesn't reduce it enough to be worthwhile i think you can reduce entrenchment by a maximum of five do you know what i actually don't know actually i can we're at we're at 15 percent now and it's reducing it by 0 0.8 so can someone fudge the math there i think it's might probably minus three if you max it out i imagine minus three but minus three remember if you look really closely you can see my entrenchment here is 37 percent with a base amount of five. Oh, okay, so I can see what's happening here. The base maximum is five, so it's reducing the base maximum by minus three. So you are losing 50% entrenchment. There you go, I've learned something new, guys. It looks like it is a little bit more effective on the offensive than I originally thought. So that's nice to know, I guess. But also, as you can see, the biggest factor overall is that maximum planning factor, which potentially, with a maximum spy network, you can reduce planning bonus by 100%. 100 which is mad op if you are defending such as poland soviet union or france when germany decides to bang on your back door or front door and that's it that's the spy video guys there are all the bonuses you can get for spies that are really worth your time <laughs> we can talk about all the other stuff with spies if you like but overall they're the only ones that really actually matter okay all the other ones are just kind of pointless so you get intel so you can right click on germany click on intel and you can actually look at their overall intel and you can see there from intel network gaining a 20 percent bonus to how much intelligence we've got and if you hover over this you get a breakdown of what information you gather from actually ha having that also when you build up an extra maximum network you unlock operations and for instance this operation just gives you more intelligence on on their intel for their uh, for their civilian sector which potentially can give you all the way information like, for instance, convoy routes. I suppose that's quite effective for your naval game, I guess. Uh, at 90%, you can find out the routes of convoys and you can intercept their convoys more effectively, I imagine. I suppose that's kind of useful, I suppose. But a lot of time you can kind of guess. Something tells me, hmm, something tells me that maybe convoys are coming from here and potentially through the Baltic Ocean. So maybe blocking this one off the Eastern North Sea maybe has the option to block all the convoys for Germany. Hmm, that really makes you think. You see where I'm trying to go with this? You basically can do a process of elimination to know where the convoys are going anyway. Okay, that's cheap. We max out our spy network by using the Intel console command. And now we can look at the maximum potential that we can get. It does seem to vary based upon distance as well. I never actually knew that. So it looks to me the most effective placement of spies is if, let's say, I'm playing Poland. I kind of want to place them all closest to the front line to where i am so i would put them all on the eastern areas once again why can you pl place them only in certain regions i love some of the comments to tell me i know you guys are going to come out with some far far out stuff but I, to this day i have never known why you can place spies only in specific regions and it's not victory points i've already said that okay stop stop saying victory points it's not anyway we place our spies here now and you can see, based on how deep uh, blue or purple it is, you get how the bonuses vary. So it looks like to me, it's always more worthwhile to place them as close to your border as possible to uh, remove uh, the maximum planning factor for Germany. It makes you get like 50% minimum attack bonus from maximum planning and reducing that bonus is going to be super worthwhile. And the reason why you can see there, minus 100% max planning. You have no planning bonus, zero, none. You have nothing. Same here, infiltrate army, navy, and air force does the same thing. Basically gives you intelligence based on the certain region that you want to go for. <sighs> because operations don't give you a great amount and a great deal of stuff, it feels like because you have to take them off building a network, it feels like it's not worth it for me. So another little extra factor that's kind of worth mentioning 
Oh, wow. That's another one that's worth mentioning. And it's one of the reasons spies are an absolute pain in the ass. So this is how I feel like this should work. Instead of the magic RNG of, oh, you've been captured. It should basically show you some like a danger bar that increases. And when the danger bar becomes really high, it's very almost intimate, they're going to be captured. So you've got the option, if you want to micromanage spies, you can move them to a different region, and then they're less likely to reduce their harm factor. That would be a cool way that you could micro it, be involved with the game mechanics, but you as a player have an actual impact on the ability to not actually have your spies captured. This kind of just magic like, poof, he's just being captured, and then I have to lose two spies because I have to send one? on a, a mission is just really frustrating so basically i just did an operation there it basically says how long it will take 35 days how easy it will be no risk whatsoever capturing people from prison apparently takes no risk it costs 50 uh, support equipment and it also requires one civilian factory it's like producing building one civilian factory so that's the reason why spies are announced a pain in the ass because if you're a minor nation you need all your factories look now i've just lost two spies so that means my spy network is significantly weaker than it once was before be aware if you want maximum infiltration for like doing these infiltration events you want to stack spies on top of each other uh, pigeons discovered that you build a network up to 100 a lot quicker if you stack them all on the capital all in one place however if you want to take advantage of the strength of the range see these these arrows jumping all over the place and take advantage of the these bonuses the max padding factor one you want to spread them out so that's the pros and cons Spread them out to take advantage of reducing planning bonus. Put them all together to build the maximum intel network. You basically got a choice between the two. Uh, also, I would imagine stacking them and getting the 100% would also give you that full 15% attack bonus. Remember, 15% varies based upon the difference of intel between two nations. Like if they know a lot about you, you might only get 2% or 1%. But if, if you know significantly more about you than them do, they'll get an extra attack bonus attacking you. Does that make sense? Um, I could make a tier list of operations because... It would all be gathered at the very bottom. Operations are just so rubbish. Um, obviously, rescuing you guys is super worth it. Getting intel is, is po super pointless, but you have the ability to steal blueprints. A lot of people say to me, why don't you steal more blueprints? I personally think it's a net loss. I think you invest something into it, and then the result of it is you uh, gain a, a potentially a blueprint that you don't even want. I don't like the RNG element to it. It just... Like, for instance, if I gain 10% research for support equipment, I'm like, wow, that was a waste of time. If I gain a 10%, 20% uh, bonus for central uh, concentrated industry or dispersed industry, I suppose that's more OP. But once again, the RNG and just rolling of the dice is just kind of a really, really, really shit. Resistance contracts is an interesting one too. You basically select a state that isn't the core territory and you have the ability to send spies to that region and it will increase the resistance by about 20%, but you can repeat it over and over again if you want to. I think every time you repeat, it increases more and more. It's never worthwhile doing because you never can increase resistance high enough to make it actually worthwhile. And to create a coup, you need an average amount of resistance to be over 90% for the entire region. And to get it that high is incredibly difficult and it costs a lot of resources. I've just realized it doesn't actually cost anything this. I think the way it works is you start a resistance contract. And then every time you do a resistance contract on top of that, it increases it significantly more over time. Let's do the operations instantly. Operation instant. Repair it. I just rescued that spy. Done the resistance contract. You hover over here now, you can see. Oh, it actually doesn't work the way I expected. It's not increased resistance. What it's basically done is it's unlocked new operations. Of, uh, of resistance that's the one i actually want resistance so should we do the resistance so we do resistance strength it says it increases by 10 percent. 10 percent, such a measly amount of resistance oh my goodness it's just not worth your time it's just not worth it how many of these can we do let's just repeat it over and over again by the way i'm cheating right now i'm making operations commence and actively go through quickly but it's a risky thing to do Meaning they're likely to die or get injured after going to hiding or get imprisoned. It takes 50 days, too, so it's a huge amount of time. So do one. The operation will be... Re oh, I have to select a state. Oop, I messed up. I have to select a state as well. There you go. We did the mission. One of them got captured and then the other one got put into hiding. However, it was a success. Oh, we got 20%. So it's, it lies to you. It's not just 10%. It basically can vary based upon how successful the mission is. Send the other two guys in. Commence. And it's completed. 
Do it again. Remember, we're doing operations and stacking them here. This is not a real life situation. Another one. One got injured. And now we've actually got no active spies left other than that one. So you need two spies to do the active mission to make it worthwhile. And then we can see the resistance is increasing. As you can see, one of the resistance operations increased it by 20%. Another one increased it by 20%. And then another one is increased it by 10%. And you can see now that the resistance is increasing incredibly, incredibly slowly. But remember, if you want Bohemia to rise up, you need a total of 90% resistance for all for the average of all the core territory that's got. It's quite easy as Bohemia, actually, because it's only two. But getting it to 90%, that's, that's not as easy as you think. I guess we could send another one on a rescue mission. I've never played with this before, but it's kind of fun in a way that you can do these operations at lightning speed. At least they're actually becoming somewhat more effective than usual because I can do them unbelievably quickly. Another one. One's got into hiding. We've only got one spy left. <laughs> also, spies have two levels. There's recruit level, level one, and there's also level two. And when they become a level two, uh, they can build a spy network quicker. And you can see the level of progression... No, I don't know where you look for that. I thought it was a percentage when you hovered over their face. Oh, you can see 15%. You can actually see it. Skill 1, 15%. But this guy... There you go, 28%. So he's, he's making his way. They're less likely to be captured. They're less likely to be risky. They're also more likely to build a network. Blah, blah, blah. Standard, standard. Oh, they're all into hiding right now. Oh, no. I, can't, I don't mind when you do an operation and there's a risk behind it and there's a random chance of going to hiding, dying or being put into prison. That's okay because at least the player initiated that and then you knew the risks associated. When you're building a spy network and just instant RNG hits you and your spy gets thrown into prison, it's like, oh man, I really don't feel like I deserve that because I kind of felt like it kind of just happened outside of my will, you know? Did you get what I'm trying to say? Do another one. Another one. It's like you can stack them quite high though, which is kind of fun. But can you see what's happening here? Every time I do the operation, the cost goes up exponentially. To do the next resistance mission... Oh, these ones are different. This one requires civilian factories and five transport planes. What? The other one required 20,000 guns. 20,000? That's a huge amount of guns. Boom, another one. And we're all into hiding and one got captured. I kind of like this. I'm kind of finding this amusing. Oh, it also has another impact. It's reducing their compliance. Oh, look at all these numbers stacked up now. <laughs> stacked up now. This is a fun little mini game to play, I guess. And right now I'm enjoying it because the operations um, are instant. But think of it in the real world. These, these operations take a huge amount of time to deploy and execute. It's like you never realistically can do this. So that's how you cancel the mission. You have to click on the refund button. I'm waiting for them to come back. They've gone into hiding, boys. They just ma magically one day just reappear and be like, hey, do you know what? I think we're going to continue our investigation to Germany. Uh, agency instant. And this creates instant networks. Up. Rescue. Also, one thing to know as well, if you have three spies in prison and you do a one operation mission to rescue them, it frees them all in one go because Germany keeps everyone in one prison, which I just think is super funny if you think about it. Ah, where should we keep? All of the spies will put them in one prison. <laughs> That's so dumb. I love it. So you can sabotage their industry as well. Once again, why would you do that? Why would you do that? I don't understand. There's not enough industry in this state to make it kind of worthwhile. I know it's very historical, and that's what actually happened for partisans. Damage the infrastructure as well. Look at the cost for this one transport plane. And you're damaging infrastructure. I feel like these ones should also increase resistance as well. It should empower the resistance movement by doing these operations. But the damage they do is so unbelievably small. It's pointless. Another resistance one. Boom, boom. Resistance, repeat, go. Oh, I have to select the state. I keep forgetting to select the state. Pop. And again. Cheating sub guns. 37,000 guns. So as you imagine, every time you do this, the cost of it just goes up exponentially. So it becomes more and more not as worthwhile to do. You think with the cost going up, the amount of resistance you'd get would go up, wouldn't it? Nope. 37,000 guns to increase resistance. 
And look at the amount of operations we've done right now. And the resistance is only 36%. Now, I understand from a multiplayer perspective, you stacked all these at one go and all the players did them over and over again. It would obviously cause chaos. And I understand why they do that. But for the most part, there's just no point doing this operation. It's reached a certain point where in single player, it's just completely pointless. Um, once again, we've increased in resistance here at 37%. It's still going up. Oh, the resistance target is 100%. So will we actually get to 100%? Hmm? Maybe not. There we go. It's going up, boys. It's going up. Okay, let's talk about some of the spy stuff. So we've also got form department as well. So this is your uh, cryptology department. Very historical for Bren. It takes, uh, in this case, how much did it take? It's basically scales based on how many upgrades you've got and how quick you can decrypt. I've got it happen to instantly. And what you do is you hover over this little green button here and it lets you know the bonuses you get. So you get a bonus to all the Intel networks all the inter networks all the departments here all these four of them which is kind of cool uh then with that as well you get an air detection of five percent interception efficiency 25 percent. that's a decent bonus that and that's it that's it and then you also have the ability to, to unlock some insane bonuses but only for 30 days and then you have to do the whole process of uh deciphering their cipher again uh i can imagine this is quite effective on the defensive because it gives a 15 percent defense bonus which is kind of like uh Last stand, you know, the decision. It's a bit like that. Uh, also, enabling preparation speed plus 50%. That could be kind of useful, but it's only for 30 days. So you're gaining basically 45 days worth of preparation instead of 30. Yeah, that's not very good, is it? No, that's not very good at all. Breakthrough bonus against country 15%. And basically, it gives you 50% for all the departments. So basically, you know everything about the country for 30 days. I don't think it's worth it. I think the bonus is not worth it. And these are the only ones when you look at them and you're like, ooh, that's kind of cool. But then you think about it, you're like, mm, not so much. I guess it's kind of cool that you could do this without spies. This is happens completely independently. Once again, these bonuses don't feel worthwhile for me. So I don't really, I kind of ignore them. And be aware that if you do reveal their cipher and the 30 days are up, you lose these the passive bonus as well until you decrypt their cipher once again. Let's do some other operations. I'll show you this one. So what this does is it unlocks uh, operations. So right now, because we've unlocked strength and resistance, it's give the option to steal blueprints. So this is the one the milk the community gets mad at, gets mad excited about, but I think it's completely pointless. 120 days. It's risky. Uh, costs four civilian factories, which is an eye-watering amount of production, and you have a very small chance of capturing something the game doesn't even let you know what you captured did that actually execute that mission i don't even know oh you gain political powerful for infiltrating a civilian okay that's actually something i guess did i did i that actually work i don't think that's even executed we have to wait for these guys to come back cool this guy has been harmed in the invasion so there's two three things that can happen to them well four things i guess one they come back safe nothing really happens uh, two, they come back and they go into hiding, which is like a very small portion of time. I think it's like 14 days. Uh, they have a third option, which they can disappear for like 60, 70 days, which they're injured. And the fourth option is they get put in prison. Oh, no, there's a fifth option. They just die. They just get killed. Pew, pew, pew. They're dead. Let's capture. Oh, we... wow. It unlocks it immediately. <laughs> Man, they buffed this to the way it used to be. They buffed it. I don't recall it being that strong. <laughs> I guess that's kind of cool. Research something instantly. The only issue with that, though, is you have to pull your spies off, which loses your intel network to be able to do the capture thing. You know what I mean? Oh, so I have to go infiltrate them again to be able to steal blueprints again. Commence it. And I look dispersed for. So in the past, it used to give you a research bonus, but now it just gives you a technology that they've already got. Hey, that's actually pretty OP, actually. Do you know what? I, I love having my mind changed. And that's a prime example of my mind has actually changed. Would I do it in my normal game? No. <laughs> no. Because uh, once again, I think the, the the actual physical spy network is is really OP. There's also, you can they have the ability to capture a cipher which decrypts 30% of the cipher instantly. I think that's so pointless. This is risky. It requires resources. Or you could just wait. I, I think I'll just wait. I think I'll just wait. And the other ones apply the same. Army, Navy, and Air Force. They give you a blueprint to unlock. Okay. 
so let's talk about the the forbidden ones okay there's three operations that i feel like i just noteworthy to mention orchestrate coup so this only really applies to like fascists or communist stations that have a, a, a war goal against a certain nation um let's see if we can do it as germany i'm just loading it as germany right now and oh by the way becoming a spy master basically just means you gain plus one spy for every major power in your faction so as you can imagine allies late game gains an insane amount of spies because they've got so many networks and so many major powers in this case i've got italy so i gain plus one spy there's a max amount of spies i think it's nine maybe but the easiest way of getting three spies is elusive gentleman uh spy you get with the agency and then five upgrades and then you gain three spies easily and then obviously plus one spy for every major power that's in your faction yeah, if you click spy master button um all right all right a bunch of spies we have a war goal on there aren't even enough places to put spies <laughs> for poland so you have to stack one in the capital and now you've got the operation to do a coordinated strike pop pop you have to select a location Okay, you don't actually see anything on the map. I can select Western Poland. Okay. Deadly. Cost you 16 civilian factories. <laughs> what? And uh, 200 support equipment. Just to make sure I understand this. Sorry, I'm being stupid. But it costs you 16 factories for five days. So it pulls them from your construction. And, you, and, you, and 16 civvies are basically suspended for 16 days. Just a confusion. So you will automatically declare war on Poland through a surprise attack. When activated, all prepared port strikes and strategic bombings in the target region will execute multiple times without air defense being to intercept them. And that's the only thing I think it does. So it's kind of, it's kind of like the Japanese attacking the USA at Pearl Harbor. This, it's happened now and now we have the ability to do a port strike there's nothing in the game that shows me any stats to let me know any of this <laughs> so i'm just using my imagination oh there we go port strike we hit a submarine we lost two bombers okay so it wasn't a surprise attack now the surprise already gone god this is so bad it's so bad it's so expensive never do coordinated strike i think i've done it once before in the past the bonuses are just rubbish you need to gain for at least two weeks a 10 percent attack bonus burst the nation to make it worthwhile otherwise it's just totally not worth it do not touch that button it's totally not worth it anyway the next one is orchestrate coup the requirements for this one are insane however it's really easy to do against a minor power and about borderline impossible against a major power because you have to drop their stability and drop their war support no it's just stability actually just drop the stability below a certain power now you can do that by doing one of the spy operations here which is propaganda which reduces the stability over a base amount however it's got a very high chance of risk with this one so you're less likely you're more likely to get caught in short, if they're a major power, you have to get their stability below 70% to orchestrate a coup. It basically makes a civil war fire, which is really strong. If they're not a major power and they're at peace, you got you have to drop their stability below 50%. But if they're a major power, you have to drop it below 70%, which is kind of borderline impossible. Well, other than some certain circumstances. And it, and it causes a civil war. It fires a civil war, basically. Uh, I know there's an, uh, there's, a, there's an achievement for Spain to make civil wars happen around the world. Aim for nations with low stability and our minor powers, and you'll probably do okay. Very expensive to pull off, though. Once again, another one of those, one of those very niche scenarios that I, I feel like when you can pull it off, they're really OP, which is really worth it. Uh, but if you can't pull it off, then you, you're kind of not going to help you. So what's the point? Anyway, now let's talk about the one. The one. Now, there are a bunch of other operations, by the way, so this one creates fake units. Just kind of cool for multiplayer, I suppose. But let's talk about the one. Collaboration state. Oh, this is so strong. You need at least three or four of these to max out your collaboration state. What it means is when you annex this nation, you will gain a massive amount of compliance based on how much of a collaboration state you've built inside them. If you get a full collaboration state by doing three operations or four operations, depending on how long it's going to take, uh, you will get 100% compliance when that nation gets annexed. 
unbelievably strong means there'll be no resistance inside of that nation however the cost for these ones are very high support equipment guns and uh, civilian factories very 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 high building this inside of a nation as also will reduce their surrender limit meaning you have to take less land before they will get capped very very important for germany to do this against the soviet union it means you don't have to push all the way past the urals to capitulate them it means you can actually cap them on the west side of the urals by taking all the major cities and all the european parts of the soviet union which saves you so much time collaboration state is the only one that is for the most part worth doing i think all the other ones are just kind of borderline pointless i will say one thing as well compliance is, is a, as op as it might be because this operation costs so much it's, it's less likely you'll be able to get it so for instance if you're a minor power like hungary for instance having to put something to support equipment is really annoying and losing 10 civvies over 60 days is massive for your industry so maybe you'll be able to capitulate a nation but then what do you go from there you know what i mean um, do you know, I think there is a sweet spot that if you get one collaboration state in a nation and build compliance off that, that can be useful to boost your industry when you cap that nation, if you cap that nation. Um, but overall, if you look into cap a nation quicker and then not have to worry about resistance at all, you want to get max three collaboration states, which will max out your compliance. Anyway, in brief, um, spies. Uh, all the operations are practically useless apart from rescuing spies and collaboration states. Uh, to a certain degree, maybe getting intel is kind of worth it or like stealing technology from that building an intel network is really worth it when you spread them out uh, for defensive purposes you want to spread them out for operation purposes you want to put them all together in one location because that makes it more effective and also if people are doing operations against you uh, you want to put your spies on counterintelligence which is this one up and this one up also one other final thing one final note is if you max out your spy network inside of a nation what you can do is put them on silent intel meaning you do not gain any bonuses however this guy will lock in the 100% spy network in this nation so it's permanent locked in 100% you do not gain any bonuses you do not gain any bonuses but I think you can still build a collaboration state yeah this is the matter of doing that so basically what you do is use these spies to build a collaboration state but then on the back of it uh, you keep this guy on a quiet network so you basically take advantage of the 100% oh and it also keeps the intel up as well but the only big downside is you're not taking advantage of the area effect that you do to reduce planning bonus and intel. So it all depends on the situation, I guess, because the network strength is really good for planning bonus and defensive purposes. It's really worth it as Poland and France. But as the UK, for instance, because you're not directly at war with Germany, you might be better putting them on silent network and using it to build operations. I suppose it all depends on what nation you're playing as, I guess. Uh, America and the UK are probably better off building a network than overbuilding the area-based ones. Ooh, spies, aren't they great? Uh, not really. So spies, getting more of them, worth it. Um, going for a cryptology department, not worth it. 90% of operations, not worth it. Collaboration states, massively OP. Uh, personally, if Paradox wanted to improve spies by a billion percent, they allow you to place spies in any kind of region, any region, not these specifically only certain arbitrary regions. Uh, this makes it really painful. Building a network inside of Germany as you're invading them is really difficult. Uh, because you can only place them in specific states and it creates weird scenarios when you push by Moscow like where do you put the bloody spies and then when you push into Siberia here what, where's this massive region of the world here it makes up like like 10 percent of the fucking world and you can't put spies in any of it oh Kazakhstan no spies right also America is another issue too have you seen have you seen America here yeah. look nothing in the south only as high as North Carolina. That's Virginia, sorry. Oops, that's North Carolina. Um, uh, weird, strange gap in between the Great Lakes. And then the entirety of the the, the Middle West, the Midwest. <laughs> no spies. You can't place them apart from California. Why? Why? That's oh, such an oversight. I don't really have... I hate that mechanic. It makes it really difficult to play the game as well based on that mechanic. Because once again, take advantage of the area. Bonuses are pretty effective. But if you can't do that because of this, this is annoying too. This is also strange too. You can put it into Spain and the north. Nothing in the south. Why has this always been the case? You know? Yeah. Anyway, th there's my little take on spies anyway. I think there's definitely some improvements to be made in the future with spies. I'm surprised the devs haven't had a look at it. But overall, that's pretty much it. Guys, if you enjoyed this kind of video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to give me some love, that is what you can do. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Love you.